Hello, hello everyone! Welcome, welcome to the channel. My name is Ariel. I am the Sassy Dragon and today we will be talking about one of my all-time favorite fragrances ever made and that would be Champs-Élysées by Guerlain. This is to me a memory in a bottle. I started wearing this back when I was a teenager when it was created in 1996 and I have never stopped loving it. It is absolutely to me one of the most unique fragrances anyone could ever have. Um, it does not smell like anything else I've ever smelled and today in today's climate it seems like there's only a few kind of basic types of fragrances with very few extremely unique standouts. It seems like there's lots of fruity florals, there's lots of white florals, there's lots of, you know, woodsy, you know, ambery smells, there's tons of syrupy sweet gourmands, but this one, I tell you, it really does stand on its own, and for me, it has definitely stood the test of time. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the fragrance. I'm definitely going to spray this on my arm um, because they have created it in a new new bottle here for uh, this, I believe it was either late last year or this year, um, and they have thankfully brought it back because for a while it looked like this was gone. Um, suddenly it was gone and I was really unhappy. I was like, oh no, it was like my favorite thing. And I used to be able to get it really inexpensively on discount perfume sites because it's one of those that it was old enough that people had kind of forgotten about it. It wasn't the exciting new thing. And so it, you know, I could pick up a big bottle of it for less than 50 bucks. It's not the case anymore. And if you go on eBay, you're going to be um, blown away by how much money people are getting for this perfume right now. It's actually kind of wild for the um, old, you know, vintage original bottle. So let's go ahead. I uh, pulled up a few notes, of course, from... Uh, fragrantica.com and also from the Guerlain website itself. So this was their notes. I don't know if you can see that in there, so I'm not going to bother with that, but I'm just going to read out the notes from the Eau de Parfum. Um, this top note says melon, almond, peach, violet, black currant, and anise. Middle notes of lilac, mimosa, lily of the valley, peony, almond blossom, rose, hibiscus, with base notes of vanilla, sandalwood, almond tree, benzoin and cedar. Now what I will say about this fragrance is that most of these notes do not hit me front and center. They really, really do not. Um, and that is a testament, honestly, to how well blended this fragrance was. It was created um, by Jacques and Jean-Paul Guerlain. So it's a it's one of the classics, guys, for sure. This is definitely created by some amazing perfumers. Guerlain is one of the oldest French uh, you know, ma mass production perfume houses out there. It's older than Chanel. It's older than Dior. You know, they've been around for a very long time. So I really feel like their their stuff is always very good. Um, but the things that hit me the most... Now, my favorite, I'm going to tell you guys, this is not the Eau de Parfum. This is the Eau de Toilette, which the notes are almost identical to. Uh, but the difference is that I will say about the Eau de Toilette and the reason I like it just a little bit better is because that black current note is a little stronger, it's a little sparklier, it's a little sharper, it comes to the forefront very strong and I love that note so that is the only reason why I personally like the Eau de Toilette a little bit more. The Eau de Parfum is a little bit smoother, rounder, it doesn't punch you quite as, as sharp with that black currant to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, oh, it's just when I smell this, it takes me back to a very good time in life, guys. It's like the late, the mid to late nineties and, you know, just enjoying like playing a lot of video games in arcades, <laughs> not, not at home. Um, you know, going to movies, hanging out with my friends, um, all the, all the fun stuff is do lots of concerts. It reminds me of that, um, yeah, performing music cause I'm a musician too. So it, it, all those things just come back to me as soon as I smell this. And I'm going to tell you as well that if you get a hold of one of the vintage bottles, 
both of them, either the EDP or the Eau de Toilette, and I'll tell you, there's very little difference in strength between them. Most of the time in perfumery, the EDT is lighter, weaker, not as strong. Mm -mm. With this, the EDT and the EDP are both equally strong with the vintage bottles. They are monsters when it comes to longevity, strength. You will put this on, especially if you put it like in your hair behind your ears, you'll be smelling it till the end of the day. It will not go away very easily or quickly at all, at least on me. I know everybody's a little bit different. Um, for some people, like there are perfumes that some people say they last all day long. On my body, the skin, my skin just eats them up. So it's different for everyone. But for me, these are just absolute <laughs> amazing when it comes to how enduring and uh, long lasting they are. So yes, this is just, mm. You can definitely get the fruit right away. You know, you're, you're getting that, that really well blended melon peach aspect. The black currant is very, very present here. And I wouldn't call this a syrupy black currant. This is a fresher, more authentic black currant. It's, it's, it's just, it's a little more tart. That's what it says, that tart kind of casses. Um, then you really can also get, especially as it dries down, you're going to get that nice lilac. The mimosa is definitely very strong in this. Very subtle undertones of like, it's it's almond flour and wood, not like almond oil. So it's not going to have that almondy smell straight up. It's a, oh, it's just beautiful, guys. Um, you get just a little bit of the sweetness of the vanilla. Some people really refer to this as a yellow or spring scent. I do not feel that way about it because, of course, in my own memories, I wore this all year long. This was my first really fancy signature scent when I was a teenager. So, you know, for me, this felt very glamorous, very sophisticated. It was that kind of, you know, little black dress or long black dress kind of, you know, thing I'd, you know, wear it with. And it always felt just right, no matter what. It did not necessarily feel like it embodied a particular time of year. And I still feel that way about it, is that I think that it's very, very nice for all times of year um, because the performance is always good. It's not too cloying in the heat and it lasts, it stands up in the winter as well in the cold times. Um, I was able to go on to eBay and grab myself a few more of the vintage bottles since these are no longer going to be made. And um, so this is one that came, this is a one little, a little mini one ounce bottle, very cute. And it came in this pink box. Um, I remember the pink boxes. I remember there was also a gold box. I think the gold box might be a little older. I think the pink box was actually a little bit newer, but either way, the juice is exactly the same. So. Let's fast forward. I was heartbroken um, when I realized that these perfumes were no longer being produced. Um, I will also say this was the original. I printed this out on my computer. This was another thing that absolutely was a big part of my life and so much a part of my memories with the Champs Elysees perfume. I will never forget pulling this ad it was, you know, out of one of the magazines that you get, and it had, like, the sample on it, right? And the beautiful picture of Sophie Marceau, who's so elegant and chic and French. And, you know, there it is, just this wonderful ad, this beautiful black and white photography uh, with the Arc de Triomphe in the background. And so, um, the, the, I can't say this properly, and I'm not going to try to, because I'm not going to mispronounce the French here. But what that translated to, at least on my American version in English, was life is best played without a script. And so I loved that quote. I thought that was perfect for my own life because I've never really followed any sort of linear path in life. And I was like, yes, that is my, that's my statement. And in this ad, you can actually go on YouTube. I'll try to include a link to this, but the old original ad from 1996, is her uh, with the Portis head music, give me a reason to love you. It's playing in the background. Ah, oh, she gets out of the car. She's angry at her boyfriend. She throws the, well, she throws the flowers down, then she takes them back. And she walks off in a beautiful French huff. And that song is playing. And the perfume, you know, just, ugh, it's like, one of the nicest perfume ads ever. Like I'd actually seek that perfume ad out <laughs> and watch it for that alone. So fast forward to today and 
thankfully, Guerlain has not um, completely lost its mind, like uh, a lot of fragrance, you know, companies, and has not completely trashed their old classics. Um, and they did bring back Champs Elysees in a new bottle. Now this is the this is one of their old classic bottles or variation on it with that inverted kind of heart shaped stopper. Now they have not yet, as far as I know, brought back the Eau de Toilette version. This is the Eau de Parfum. And I've already, of course, I've tried this, I've sprayed it. It was $135 for a 2.5 ounce bottle, which I think is actually a decent price. Um, it came, it was free shipping came in a really nice box. It was really, really very well presented and it had a couple of free samples in there as well, of their skincare. So it was a nice purchase. I was very excited to get this. It was actually sold out for a long time on the Guerlain website. So just go to guerlain.com um, and you may or may not be able to get it. They'll have it though. And you can, like I did, I put my name on the wait list. They let me know when it was there and I bought it immediately and I'm super happy I did. So yeah, this punch is not so strong because the Eau de Parfum, in my opinion, has always been a little rounder, a little smoother. It's not so sparkly. It's not so sharp. Comes out very nice. The atomizer is nice. It's not like, you know, one of those that just hits you like a Windex bottle. <laughs> it, it's a nice, fine stream. It's different, though. This, I'm hitting a little bit more peachy right off the top. A little bit peachier, fruitier. A lot of people are going to like this more because it's not quite so oomph. To me, the EDT is a little more oomph, but I personally like that. But I think for most people, they're going to enjoy this. And it really is very much in fitting. I no longer have um, an old bottle of the EDT, EDP, the Art of Parfum, because I did sell those. I don't, I don't use them as often. But this, I do definitely remember the way it smells. And this is so much in line with the original Eau de Parfum. If I had them side by side, I don't know if I'd see a whole lot of difference. The only difference that I can really tell you between the vintage one and this one is the longevity. It's strong, it comes out just as well as the old one did in the beginning, but the lastingness of this is not even as strong as the original EDT. That is an unfortunate thing. And I don't mind reapplying, you know, a perfume throughout the day, but, you know, the strength of this is simply not the same as the vintage one. The vintage one, like I said, was an absolute beast for, like, for longevity and throw. And I'll tell you, I can't tell you, I, get, I do try to really gravitate towards using perfumes that I get regular compliments on. That's an important thing. If people never say, wow, that really smells good, I kind of go, either my skin's eating it up, or it really just doesn't smell that great, or it's just blending in to my shampoo, or it's just not really that much of a standout. But this one gets compliments every freaking time I wear it. And I, it's funny how there are a few of us 90s girls out there still roaming around because I've had a few girls, you know, that I know or I meet, and, you know, they might walk past, I might give them a hug after we've been talking for a while, and they're like, oh, Champs-Élysées, you know, they know it immediately, because, like I said, there is nothing quite like this perfume. If you want to smell different from other people, this is your girl, because not that many people wear it, not that many people, um, you know, as far as I've run into, I've never run into somebody else that was actively wearing it, but I have run into people that knew about it. So, oh yeah, I mean, it's, you can't go wrong with this. The EDP, the new version is still great. They thankfully did not deviate from the original formula as far as I can tell. The only difference is the, the strength of it is not as long lasting, but that's a minor caveat. So, but of course I still love my EDT the most. And I hope that if anybody that has anything to do with your lawn or this beautiful fragrance um, sees this video, that they will take that into consideration to bring them both back because, you know, they're, they're both good for different reasons. I like the EDP is a little sweeter, a little rounder, just a touch fruitier. That's, you know, it's, it's, you get a little bit more of that peachy vibe, but that wonderful kind of mimosa lilac dry down in the center is so good. And it's, it's this, I would say, yeah, it is a lighter fragrance. This isn't heavy. It's not deeply musky, woodsy, anything like that. 
Um, it has enough of a base to it to keep it from being too high octave, in my opinion. Um, but it's not something that you, if you're wanting or, or you know you like a deeper dry down, it's not going to be in there. This is more of a sparkly, upbeat, yet sensual, seductive. To me, it is a very romantic fragrance. Some people might call not call this. I don't know if I'd call it sexy, but it definitely lures you. It's like because you smell and you're like, what is that? Like, you know, it makes you want to come closer. It is to me that, that like, you know, this is a, this is a fragrance that sparkles any time of the year. It has that light city of lights, right? Paris, the city of lights. It has that kind of vibe to it. Um, always a good one. Always wonderful. Always unique. Um, so I definitely recommend it. Go, go give them your business. Show them that you love this fragrance because I certainly do. And I will continue to purchase it guys as long as you continue to make it. So have fun guys. I'll see you soon. Go enjoy, uh, smelling good. Talk to y'all very soon. Take care.